And of course, he went into the partnership with the great Roman Abramov Abramovich, uh, with whom he had disagreements later. But he recognized him as a very energetic young person. And this is also another a subsidiary principle. It's not obligatory. It's not a law, but it is a good principle. And that is, especially if you're above the age of 40, get someone younger into your enterprise and into your plans because younger people, especially those people who are, are entrepreneurial, uh, younger people are more energetic in the beginning, especially, and the, they bring freshness and ideas that perhaps a person who's older and more set in his ways uh, could not bring to the table. And that's perhaps one of the reasons why um, Berezovsky partnered with Abramovich. And of course, the, the great aspect of his reinventing his life completely from a career in science to a career in business is also an inspiration, especially to those of us who are trying to reinvent ourselves. And this is another thing that we go into this course that you can constantly reinvent yourself. It doesn't matter what age. Because there have been uh, people, ladies and gentlemen, in their 90s who have embarked upon new pursuits and who have finished them. As long as you're living and you're an eternal being at any rate, age does not matter. And age indeed does not show unless we allow that constriction and that resistance to catch up with us. So never say, I feel old. Never say, oh, I'm getting older. Always have that fresh mindset, that youthful mindset and you will continue to be youthful and surround yourself with youthful people. That's just uh, an aside there. So what I want to do for the remainder of this show, I want to really read some passages from the book of Boris Berezovsky. And it's not actually a book because Berezovsky wrote a lot of writings, indeed books. But this was from a memorandum that Berezovsky wrote, I believe, in Russian to members of his company. And it was translated in 2019. Indeed, I discovered this 2019 to 2020. And I didn't know. I had an inkling that Berezovsky knew these principles, but I thought he was unconsciously practicing these principles, as many uh, business people that we'll discuss in this course unconsciously pr uh, practice them. But he was very self-conscious of this philosophy and of these principles. And of course, I knew this philosophy before this book, but it just crystallized it for me. And what he says is, and this is very interesting. So, Berezovsky was a Jew, but he converted to Orthodox Christianity uh, towards the latter part of his life when he was in the United Kingdom, to the Russian Orthodox Church. And these are two very rich spiritual traditions with rich interpretation and um, rich um, uh, exegesis of the scriptural works. And this is what we go into when we go into the perennial philosophy. It's all about taking exegesis from the different traditions and knowing that they're the same at their core and they have the same universal meanings. This is syncretism or perennialism. And it's something that we do promote in our course because it allows us to find the beauty in every tradition and to indeed nurture ourselves in those traditions. So he said that being a Jew, I've lived and worked in Russia. And he said, I've changed my religion and been baptized in Christian orthodoxy. Um, but here's where he really goes into it. In reality, there is no sun for every person out there, but the money of the world can be enough for everybody. To earn money, one needs above all the desire and the ability to accept it and luck, luck, and once again, luck. And of course, now he goes into luck because we have a very different idea of luck in the Western culture as opposed to a traditional culture. He says, ask any Russian which could be compared to the, just the run-of-the-mill Western, even though there are many differences. He will answer, what is luck? He will answer, fortune independent of ourselves. Jews are raised differently, Berezovsky says. From a young age, we are taught that luck is the result of a single-minded action, that seemingly random events are in reality prepared by people, by their faith, and by their will. The world is not an avalanche of chaos. And here's the first main principle of active, deliberate success. In this course, we're teaching deliberate success here. We're not teaching stumbling upon success. 
We're not teaching working very hard and then revving up a huge desire and then taking a break from that desire and allowing it in, which is why many successful people are successful. They think it's the hard work, but the hard work is simply revving up more desire. What lets in the success is when they take a small break from that hard work or they give up in a certain um, aspect, and we'll see this more from the teachings of Berezovsky, then they allow it in. In this course, we want to just allow it in. We want as, as least amount or the least amount of stress as possible. That's what we teach in this course. But the first principle to deliberate creation is knowing the cosmology of the universe and knowing the actual nature of existence. Why is this important? Because when you know the nature of existence, then you know that you're not living in a hostile universe. You'll know that the cards are rigged in your favor, not against you. Because, of course, the number one law is you make the laws. So if your law is that the odds are rigged against me, then they're going to be rigged against you. But if you know the nature of the universe and know that it's just a huge game that's rigged in your favor, then you'll indeed reap that. That's why... No, even though you don't have to know it, you can know it subconsciously, but knowing it consciously is much more satisfying and much quicker to get you to that point. So Berezovsky, the great and eminent mathematician and entrepreneur, says, the world, and remember, he studied physics deeply and academically. This is not a lay person speaking. This is not someone who just read a few books. This is someone who was an actual mathematician and who penetrated this deeply. The world is not an av avalanche of chaos, and luck is not as blind as many people imagine. People on earth receive differing amounts of money because they grasp reality differently. That goes into our first principle. They sense the world differently. To make you richer, changes are required within you, not externally. This, if you will, is the magic of success, and indeed we'll go into the actual meaning of magic later. But this is the magic of success. And he talks about our primitive ancestor before going hunting used to draw a deer in the sand and attack an imaginary animal with a spear. Why did he do this? Out of ignorance? Or did he know from experience of millennia that any material action is preceded by a plan, a mental working out of the future event? And this is what we know as when you focus on something, it creates, it actually brings it about immediately in the spiritual and then that manifests on the physical. So it's much easier for most things, and of course sometimes it's easier to just go ahead and do it in the physical if it's within arm's length. But things that are too big to take action on and to accomplish immediately, it is easier to create them in the mind and in the spiritual, and then to allow them to manifest in the physical, if only you know the process and the techniques how to do this. This magic was not primitive. It helps the hunter obtain a real deer. When I, a modest scientific worker, started doing business in the beginning of the 1990s, I strictly followed an understanding of Western social psychology to get rid of even the most competent employee if he demoralizes the collective with his pessimism and disbelief in success. So he knew this because the psychological works had said this, but he had not yet contemplated completely and known completely the actual reason behind this, the actual causal factor behind this. Then I was only following the Western trend and did not understand the reason. Now I know exactly what this is about. If in that ancient tribe had been a very reasonable hunter who began to doubt the drawing in the sand, the tribe would have not gotten the deer and would have died of starvation. One cannot joke around with faith. Placebo can be of any kind, whether in the sand, in the silk banner, or in the wood of an icon, but it is faith itself that moves things forward, and it does so in proportion to its strength. So placebo. Knowing that nothing in this material world is causal because this material world in itself is illusory. It is vibrational. It's not illusory to the person who's in the game, but knowing it ultimate that it is illusory, this is why an understanding of cosmology has a direct impact upon your success. That's why we teach that in this channel. And we're going to go a little bit more into his understanding of cosmology and how it can translate over to immediate success here 